Hey everyone, Jolt here. Excalibur comes with an infinite canvas and with an infinite canvas come infinite opportunities. Today I want to give you a feature walkthrough of some of the enhancements I made that allow you to customize embeddable elements. Namely, you will be able to scale embedded elements as well as I'm adding significantly more control over markdown embeds, including almost 100% canvas candy support, as well as other settings and opportunities. But before we dive into the new features, I want to demonstrate to you the issue that we're facing. So imagine you have this video embedded, but you actually want this video to be smaller because you're maybe inserting it next to something that is already an image that has a size and the video should fit that image or for whatever other reason. Now you can start to decrease the size of the video, but you can see that at a certain point the video becomes pretty much unusable, unwatchable because of the relative scale of the video and when I press, press play then yeah, this is not a very pleasant watching experience. Now this way it is, but overall the, the whole experience is not very good. Now the same applies to the markdown embeds as well. So here's my embedded document and I can scroll here, I can navigate here. This is great, I'm happy with this document. However, if I now want to make this smaller, I come up to a similar problem that, yeah, I can make it smaller, but in the end, only the title fits, which is really not that great. What I'm after is more like this fractal type of experience where I can add additional detail to my drawing. I can make use of the full 10% to 3000% zoom range of Excolidraw. And if I want to add some tiny detail next to a point, I want to be able to add that detail. So let me show you how this works on a concrete example. So I've created this overview here about my various videos and thoughts on Visual Zettelkasten. And you can see that here in the center, I have a video about the two sides of the card and flipping the card, the card being Excolidraw and the Excolidraw markdown view. And around it, in different categories, I have references to other videos. But then if I zoom in here, then these videos also look proper. So the YouTube button size is okay. And the relative size of these videos are okay. And even I can go to a next level and you can see here, my next video and of course if I play these then they will look proper. You have the proper sized YouTube controls here. Everything works as expected. And you might also notice that here on the side I have these markdown documents which are my literature notes for these topics. And these documents are editable and they look uh, proper. And again they are scaled down to this side. So if I zoom out, then you can see that those are actually teeny tiny, especially compared to the one we wanted to do previously. So just compare these two and compare the look and feel between the two. So how do I do this? There are a couple of new features. So let's first of all pick up this video and let me show you one new feature. So if I zoom into this video and let's say this is the scale where I want to watch the video. Now there's a new comment palette action. I just type in scale selected embeddable elements to 100% relative to the current canvas zoom. So you can see the canvas zoom currently is 487%. So when I select this action, then my video is resized such that it looks good at this zoom ratio. I can do the same with my markdown document. So here again, I can just type in scale selected element. And when I choose this, then you can see that now the 
markdown embed was scaled down and you can edit it right here. So how do you scale? One way to scale is to use the common palette action I've just shown you. The other way to scale is here you can find the properties button. If I press properties then here I can simply use this toggle to change the zoom ratio so I can zoom in and zoom out or scale in and scale out and if I want to find the relative size to be 100% so that's the same as the scaling function in the common palette then I can press this button and it will automatically identify the the scale. Also you can simply add a start time to your video so if there is a particular point where you want to start the video then you can add that start time here and it will be saved to your video. I'm not, I'm not going to press uh, OK I'm just going to leave it like this. So that's one set of functions in terms of scaling. The other set of functions is you might have noticed that this document here looks different compared to these two documents. So these documents had a sketchy background and they had a different color and they had some border colors. So I want to show you some of the settings now available. First of all, I have a setting and that has been there already for a time that the embeddable will follow the theme of your Excalibur drawing. So if here I switch to dark mode, then the embeddable will switch to dark mode as well. So this is, I think, a nice feature if you like your theme and you like the light and the dark versions of your theme, then your drawing is always going to follow that. You have other options as well that this always follows the Obsidian theme. But what I want to show you is the properties window right here, because this document has significantly more properties. Now you don't see the properties because I have this turned on to use Obsidian defaults. That's why it looks like this. But if I turn this off, then you will see that I have lots of options. So for example, I can hide the file name as well as I can choose that the element follows either the background of the canvas, so this brown, or the background color of the element itself. I can set the opacity of that background color. Maybe I'm going to set this to 80%, so it is a strong background color, but I can still see the sketch in the background. And also I can select whether I want the element border color to match the stroke color of the element, or I can choose a different color here. By the way, that's true here as well. So if I don't want to match the element background color and I don't want to match the canvas background color, then I can also choose a color that I want my embeddable to have. So for example, I'm just setting this embeddable to this pinkish color like this and I've hidden the file name and I'm going to add now this way a strong red border color and when I press OK then you can see well I'm not sure that this is an ideal combination of colors but you can see that for example I was able to configure this like this but also if I now choose to follow the element background color I remove this opacity to 80% or reduce it I follow the stroke color and press OK then it now is black because I have a transparent background but if I now change the background color here so if I choose a background color uh, then that background color is going to be applied to my drawing and you can also see that if I change the fill pattern then the fill pattern changes here as well and also I can play with the element border etc. So this gives you lots of freedom in terms of how you want to manage the background color and the background look and feel of your markdown embed document. You can even make this whole thing transparent. The way to make it transparent is simply to reduce the opacity to 0%. And if I do this, then now I can also hide the background color 
and with this I'm able to add a markdown document that is fully immersive in my Excalibur drawing. And then finally, let me show you some of the CSS formatting options. And in this case, I'm going to demonstrate to you some of the Canvas Scandi formatting options. So let me just walk you through some of these options. I'm just going to copy these from here and apply it to my document. So you can see the effect of the different options. So this is making the note transparent or I can pick up the next one and I can add this and this is going to add a label to the right. TFT Hacker has done some real magic here with these uh, CSS classes. And in this case, I can rotate the text in the box by 45 degrees. Or in this case, I can create a dashed border around this. Now, of course, you can argue that you have the dash border anyway. So here I can create a, a dash border, align my drawing like that. So you can see my Excalibur dashes. But if you want this more canvas looking dash, then you can choose this as well. And finally, you can even add shapes to these elements. So in this case, this is going to make the note circle shape which is also a pretty cool feature. So the bottom line is now Excoledra supports the CSS classes in the front matter. So if you're not using Canvas Candy, you can create your own CSS classes as well, and you can format the notes in Excoledra. And then finally, let's look at some of the settings. So in settings, you can set the default for the markdown embed. So you can see here that this is under Excoledraw and you need to go to embed files into Excoledraw and you'll find the interactive markdown files settings here. You see exactly the same settings that I've shown you with the properties, but here you can set the default and then every time you insert a new markdown document that is going to follow this default. And finally, if you use Excoledraw together with Obsidian Canvas, I implemented a new setting for you as well. So in this case, I have this drawing of this end and I'm going to drop this drawing onto the canvas like this. And you can see that this is now dropped in without a border around the note and it's transparent. So let me show you some of the settings that I've done so that I can insert this drawing like this onto the canvas. First of all, you need to go to Excoledraw settings and here under embedding Excoledraw into your notes and exporting, you need to scroll down to Obsidian Canvas support and under Obsidian Canvas support, you can turn on immersive embedding, which will remove the border around the embedded object. Now, that might not be enough. So in this case, in this drawing, um, I switched over to markdown view mode. I added this front matter switch to export my drawing with a transparent background. You can configure this in plugin settings as well, but I typically don't do this. So I applied this front matter switch here. If I remove this and I come back to the drawing, and I save it, then if I come back here, then you know, see that the drawing would be embedded like this. It still doesn't have the border on canvas, but it's not so immersive. So if you want a fully immersive experience, then you need to switch to markdown view mode and you need to add the Excoletrol export transparent true. And with that, you will be able to export a note that doesn't have the background color and it will look fully immersive on your canvas. So that's all I wanted to share with you today in terms of these new features. I am super excited about these new features. I think they open up so many new opportunities for thinking visually, and I'm keen to know how you're using these features. I invite you to join the visual thinking Discord server. You can just simply click the link here on the splash screen 
and there in the showcase section I would love to see examples of how you're using Excolidraw to think visually, how you're using this new feature as well as on their feature requests and the other sections we can talk about enhancements and how you would want to take this plugin further. Thank you.